Hydraulic actuators generally develop more force than similarly sized pneumatic actuators because hydraulics are not compressible. Some of the force exerted on a pneumatic actuator is wasted compressing the air. Because liquids are not compressible, more force exerted on a hydraulic fluid goes directly to positioning the valve. This makes hydraulic actuators suitable for operating large valves. A typical single acting hydraulic actuator consists of a cylinder, a fluid port at the base of the cylinder, a vent, a spring, a piston, and a piston rod, which is connected to the valve disc. When there is no fluid pressure against the piston, the spring pushes against the piston, keeping the valve closed. When fluid flows through the port into the cylinder, the piston moves, compressing the spring and opening the valve. The vent exhausts air from the cylinder as the piston moves. When the flow of fluid stops, the fluid pressure and spring hold the piston and the valve in position. The piston can be positioned anywhere in the cylinder by controlling the amount of fluid in the cylinder. If hydraulic pressure is decreased, the spring moves the piston to close the valve, and the fluid flows from the cylinder through the fluid port. If hydraulic pressure is lost, the spring will cause the valve to fail closed. This type of actuator is considered single acting because fluid enters the cylinder through only one port and acts on only one side of the piston. Double acting hydraulic actuators use hydraulic fluid pressure to open and close the valve. A double acting hydraulic actuator consists of a cylinder, a fluid port at the base of the cylinder, a fluid port at the top of the cylinder, a piston, and a piston rod, which is connected to the valve disc. Fluid can enter the cylinder through either port to move the piston to open or close the valve. If fluid enters through the bottom port, the piston and piston rod move and open the valve. At the same time, an equal volume of fluid flows out the top port. If fluid enters through the top port, it pushes the piston and piston rod in the opposite direction, closing the valve. An equal volume of fluid is bled through the port at the base of the cylinder. When fluid flow is stopped, fluid is trapped on both sides of the piston. The trapped fluid holds the piston in place. The piston can be positioned anywhere in the cylinder by controlling the fluid flow. For a double acting hydraulic actuator to accurately position a valve, the amount of fluid fed to and bled from the cylinder must be accurately controlled. The device usually selected to do this job is a pilot valve, which is sometimes referred to as a spool valve. The pilot valve is connected to the actuator by fluid lines. A typical pilot valve consists of a valve body, solenoids, a spool, a spring at each end of the spool, a hydraulic fluid supply port, two hydraulic fluid supply ports to the actuator, and two hydraulic fluid vent ports. The valve is operated by the solenoids, which respond to signals from a controller to position the spool. One solenoid is attached to the top of the spool, and the other is attached to the bottom. When both solenoids are de-energized, the springs hold the spool in a neutral or centered position. This blocks the fluid ports going to the actuator and holds the actuator's piston in place. When the lower solenoid is energized, the spool is pulled down and hydraulic fluid is supplied through the lower fluid line to the actuator. The fluid enters the base of the cylinder pushing the piston up and opening the valve. At the same time, fluid is forced out of the top of the cylinder, through a fluid line, back through the pilot valve, out the upper vent port, and back to the hydraulic fluid supply reservoir. 
The filling and venting of the actuator cylinder are reversed by de-energizing the lower solenoid and energizing the upper solenoid. When the upper solenoid is energized, it pulls the spool up, blocking the upper vent ports and lower supply ports. Hydraulic fluid is supplied to the top of the actuator cylinder, pushing the piston down and closing the valve. The fluid below the piston is vented through the lower fluid line, back through the pilot valve, out the lower vent port, and back to the hydraulic fluid supply reservoir. If the upper solenoid is de-energized, the springs return the spool to the neutral position, blocking the fluid ports and holding the piston and valve in position. Pilot valves and other devices used with hydraulic actuators are often separate from the actuator. However, in some actuators, all the components may be part of a single unit. Two problems commonly associated with hydraulic actuators are hydraulic fluid contamination and leaks. Hydraulic fluid can become contaminated with dirt, water, or other foreign substances. Some contaminants can corrode the actuator and cause the piston to stick inside the cylinder, affecting the positioning of the valve. Contaminants can also collect inside the pilot valve and prevent the pilot valve spool from shifting correctly, or they can block the flow paths in the pilot valve. In either case, the pilot valve would not operate correctly, and the actuator would be unable to position the valve correctly. If a hydraulic actuator is operating sluggishly, it could mean that the fluid is contaminated with water or some other substance. When water is mixed with hydraulic fluid, the mixture can turn into foam, which causes the piston to have a spongy movement. You may be able to diagnose water contamination by looking at the hydraulic fluid. The fluid can usually be seen through a sight glass on the hydraulic supply reservoir. Hydraulic fluid is normally clear, but if it is contaminated with water, it appears milky white. A common source of water contamination is a leak in a heat exchanger. Many hydraulic systems have some type of heat exchanger to cool the fluid with cold water. Alternatively, some systems use steam heat exchangers to keep the fluid warm so it flows smoothly. Leaks in either type of heat exchanger will contaminate the fluid with water. Hydraulic fluid leaks are also a problem. When a fluid leak is discovered, it should be reported and fixed as soon as possible. Some hydraulic fluids are flammable, so a leak near hot equipment can be a fire hazard. Hydraulic fluids are also slippery, so any accumulation on the floor should be cleaned up.